So let's take a look at the code for the quicksort algorithm. So we're going to have a quicksort class. And our quicksort class is going to sort generic elements. We're going to have a globally scoped array, which I call array, so I remember what it is. And we're going to have um, a method that is going to accept an array of E's. And remember, in Java, remember how we construct an array of E's. If you can't remember, you might want to review the generic construction video. And we're going to be passed in an array. And I'm just going to set my globally scoped array to the array that's passed into us. And I'm going to do quick sort. And I'm going to quick sort from 0 to array dot length minus 1. So the whole array. Okay? And when that's done, I'm going to return my array, my globally scoped array. The other thing I need for my quick sort method is a swap method. And we've seen this before, but I just want to go over it because it's really helpful to have a very straightforward, very simple swap. And so our swap method is just going to take two integers. So let's say from and to. And all we're going to do is we're going to create a temporary variable e. And we're going to set that to array from, then we're going to set array from equal to array two, and then we're going to set array two equal to temp. Okay. It's a very simple swap method. It uses our globally scoped array um, variable, and it's going to work every time. Okay. In the main body of our quick sort method we're going to manipulate our globally scoped array using different variables. So we're going to have our quick sort method. And remember, when we called our quick sort method, we have two variables. So I'm also going to call those from and to. Okay? And that's the reason, the region of the array that we have to sort. So if from is greater than or equal to 2, we're done. We can just return, and we're out of there. Okay. If that's the true, we have a single element list. A single element list is already sorted. In a single element list, the smallest thing is at the beginning, and the largest thing is at the end. It's already sorted. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remember the value of my pivot point. Okay. That's the largest thing in the region that I've got to sort. That's my slice of the array that I'm trying to sort. And I'm going to set my counter to the beginning of the array. And that's my counter, which remembers the largest thing, or sorry, the first thing that's larger than the pivot point. Now, what I've got to do is iterate through my array. So we're going to go from from, and we're going to go up to 2, but we're not going to compare the value at the pivot point, remember? We're going to go up to the pivot point, the element before the pivot point, but we're not going to look at the pivot point. We increment i. And if, and here we're going to use a comparable, comparable e array i. So that's the element that we're looking at dot compare to, and this is the value of the pivot point that we remember. If that is less than or equal to 0, we want to swap that element to the left-hand side of the list. So we're going to swap, and we're going to tell it to swap i and counter, and we're going to increment counter. In fact, you could increment the counter in the swap call. 
That's the end of the iteration. That's the piece that's doing the work. This is where we're going through the list up until the element before the pivot, and we're saying, if you're smaller than the pivot, we're going to move you to the beginning of the list. If you're larger than the pivot, we'll leave you where you are, and we won't increment the counter. Now, the counter holds the, the first position of the thing larger than our pivot point. And so we need to swap counter and two. Two is the position in the array where we have our pivot point. And then we need to process the left-hand side of the array. So we're going to go quick sort, and we're going to quick sort the left-hand side of the array, so from from to counter minus one. And we're going to quick sort from counter plus one to two. Okay. So we've got a recursive algorithm. We move the smaller things to the left-hand side of counter. We move the larger things to the right-hand side. We swap that counter into the middle, that, that pivot value into the middle with counter. And then we say, let's do the left-hand side and let's do the right-hand side. And notice that in neither of these quick sorts calls do we actually include the counter. It's where it should be. It doesn't need to move anymore. 